discussion on alleviating the semiconductor supply and demand imbalance. I'm joined by Art Figueroa. He is Vice President of Operations and Quality, North America and EMEA with Smith. Hello, Art. Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me uh, here. Yeah, thanks very much for talking to me about this extremely critical issue that is on everyone's mind and is affecting so many industries these days. Where are we right now with regard to supplies of semiconductors? Has the situation remained stagnant? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? What's going on? Well, you know, it's uh, there's certainly a lot happening in the in the current uh, you know current market current environment. You know, you know, there's certainly been this 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 large disruption, uh, if you will, which is you know, which is nothing new to to the supply chain, right? You know, we're used to having disruptions. I think the biggest difference here has been, you know, the length of time that this has been. You know, this has been more of a prolonged, usually with a supply chain disruption. You know, it's it's typically attributed to a natural disaster, perhaps someplace. And, you know, and that and that span can last, you know, a few months and then it kind of fizzles, fizzles out. Well, in this case, you know, we've seen, you know, one and it's two factors, really, you know, one is is, you know, COVID, you know, as companies have gone through COVID and, and managed everything that that resulted from that, you know, then it kind of, you know, morphed into the the current chip shortage and and i think what's different about this experience has just been the the depth and the scope of this you know there's so many companies out there and so many vertical markets that are involved by this and it's not just one one sector it's multiple sectors and from where we Mm -hmm. sit you know we see this as a as a a situation that's going to continue at least for the remainder of this year and potentially all of 2022. Yeah, as you say, these do go in cycles, but I don't recall a situation where it was so serious that it caused, for instance, the automotive industry to severely cut back on production of vehicles because they just didn't have access to the chips. That feels new. Yeah, absolutely. And that and I think that has been the biggest, you know, you know, the the most eye-opening experience for that sector uh, has been the the impact. I mean, and, and you see this wherever you go. You know, you drive by a car dealership these days, and what do you see? You know, you see empty lots, and and the impact is real. Uh, and it's something that you know the automotive sector has seen has been impacted the most. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I think part of that, you know, Robert stems from the fact, uh, you know you know, that a lot of the models have, you know, more recently relied on this, you know, just in time, you know, concept in terms of, you know, that you're, you're maintaining low inventory levels and, you know, you're procuring materials, you know, in line with your scheduled, uh, you know, production. Well, what's, what's happened here is that unfortunately, you know, the contribution, you know, the effect of the, the global pandemic uh, and then the subsequent chip shortage, you know, exposed two real, you know, flaws, if you if you will, in this type of, of inventory uh, yeah. management approach. And, yeah. And, yeah. and one is that companies have failed to to build resiliency within their supply chain. And, and, and there is no redundancy uh, in that supply chain. And, and because of that it's given way to an even greater threat. And that's the threat of counterfeit components entering into into the market. Tell me more about that. Is that actually, are we seeing that happening now or are you just talking about it as a possible threat? No, it's it's the reality of of the current environment, uh, Robert. I think, you know, it's during these types of situations where you know, counterfeiters are most active. And, you know, we're seeing this obviously uh, in the in the chip market, you know, as we look at, you know, counterfeiters are, you know, you know, we're seeing them uh, counterfeit, you know, TI parts, uh, Xilinx parts are two of the main, you know, kind of manufacturers that we're seeing potentially have issues, you know, and, there, and then there's always, those components or those commodities that 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 don't have markings on them. Think of a capacitor. Think of an MLCC. You know, those are components. Yeah, since they have no, yeah, that mm-hmm. that have no surface markings are easy for counterfeiters to to, to counterfeit. So you know, the situation is certainly uh, a real uh, uh, situation, and it's something in which companies 
have to be very cognizant of. And in this rush to find parts, to find the material they need to complete their build, you know, it's, it's forcing them to expand, you know, their supply chain and, you know, expand that supply chain to include, you know, suppliers out in the open market. And that's where, you know, the greatest risk uh, uh, exists is, well, is in that it, open market. When it comes to counterfeit chips, are, are buyers of those chips unaware that they're counterfeit or are they so desperate for chips that they're willing to buy them just because they need something for production? And, and I think that's, it's, it's, it's the latter si- situation there that, you know, buyers are desperate for, for the components that they're willing to take, you know, a risk to bring that material in you know, to be able to complete the build. But, but you know, the, the more critical factor is that, you know, it's, it's a short-sighted approach, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're, 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 you're trying to satisfy a short-term gain. And that's, you know, bringing the material in. The long-term potential effect is if you're not sourcing material from the right suppliers, that you've just introduced a potential counterfeit component into whatever application that you may be using it. Think of, you know, whether, you know, life safety and in, in, in the case of automotive, you know, you get into aerospace and defense, um, you know, these, the potential impact could be far greater, uh, you know, down the, down the line. And that's why it's very important, you know, for companies to truly know who they're dealing with. Yeah, um, for sure. And to find the right types of suppliers. Well, what's going to happen in the short term, Art? Because, you know, we hear it takes about a billion dollars in several years to stand up a new fab somewhere. So there's no short term increase in production of legitimate product in the book, in, in, in the wings. How is it going to what's like the coming year going to look like? More of the same? I think so, Robert. Unfortunately, I think so that by the time you know, the manufacturers and the, and, and the fabricate, you know, the plants are up and running, you know, we're, we're still, you know, it takes a while for a plant to, to, to become fully operational. So, you know, short term, you know, I think that's where a company like Smith can, can come in and, and help customers. You know, this is the environment that we thrive, that we thrive in uh, as a, as a business. You know, what, what I suggest is, you know, companies have to look at, you know, identify an inventory management solution. Okay, we 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 we've, we've identified the just-in-time model just is not is not working right now. You know, now is the time. Identify an inventory management solution. That's where a partner like Smith can come in, where we can provide those. Oh, okay, those but solutions. you can identify it, but the, the still the supplies aren't there. I mean, better insight into essentially nothing. <laughs> so, what? How might manufacturers in this short term are they? Do they? Is it just a question of suffering and keeping production down until the until the chips come back? Is there anything they can do in a practical way? to acquire the supplies needed to resume production or keep production going. Yeah. And that's where I think it's, it's, you know, companies have to rethink, you know, how they approach, you know, knowing that, you know, with, with the short supply of, of components. Um, and, and again, it's, it's when you identify that partner that has that supply. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's very, very important that that supplier have processes in place, right. To mitigate, right that risk. So of those parts that are out there, okay, it's important that, you know, a, a, a company select a supplier that has processes in place. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that, and that's, again, where, where Smith comes into play. Yeah. The counterfeit I, com- go ahead. No, I just want, again, for the long term, though, you, in terms of, I'm, I'm thinking about what are the long term inventory strategies going forward? You suggest that the just in time model did not work. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that it doesn't mean it's going to be abandoned entirely, right? Because it definitely has advantages, cost Absolutely. advantages, but Absolutely. it's going to have to be modified to some degree. So, do you think that going forward, manufacturers are going to be more open to increasing buffer stock, safety Absolutely. stock? Absolutely. Just uh, in order to keep this from happening again, because yeah, that's the real, real question, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, we know there, there's certain, you know, a couple you know, givens in, in, in what we've realized and what we've learned going through this in that, you know, natural disasters will happen. OK, mm-hmm. uh, geopolitical you know, factors may come into play, whether it's tariffs, whether it's others, um, you know, so those factors won't go away. 
And, and what we've learned, you know, by going through this is that companies, you have to have, you know, you have to protect yourself. OK, you have to protect yourself. And that's by having, you know, that buffer buffer stock, having some inventory that's available. You know, think of that as as, you know, you know, what you and I would have is our homeowners insurance. You know, you, you, mm -hmm. you don't always need it. Right. But, you know, when there's a fire, you know, you're, you're sure going to be happy that that you have. It. And, yeah. you know, I think hindsight as some of these companies are going through what we're currently going through. You know, I think, boy, you know, <laughs> I wish I wish we had, you know, some level of, of buffer stock, you know, to get us through this, uh, through this, right. uh, through this. Well, process. Let, let's hope that the lessons being learned right now will extend into future strategies and the companies will do a better job of dealing with the inevitable disruptions that are going to be happening forever. Uh, but in the meantime. Art Figueroa of Smith, thank you very much for helping us to understand the problem and some possible solutions to the imbalance of supply and demand in semiconductors and just generally in industry. Thanks for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Robert. Thank you so much for your, for your time.